and that time does a nice job getting good position and taking the charge, and it is the sixth turnover for Holy Cross. Seawolves with a 10-point lead inside two minutes in the first frame. King directing traffic goes to Clark at the top. Keenan inside the arc. Nat she'll go back out. That's where she likes it. And they get her open. Five on the shot clock. Clark, deep ball. Rattles home. Oh, she just can't miss a shot. And if Clark can start knocking down a three-pointer like that, Stony Brook opponents are going to be a whole lot of trouble because you know what she can do when she gets the ball down in the post. She had attempted just one over the first three games, and Stony Brook is now on a 14-3 run in the first quarter. Corner three for Wright. Too strong, and a rebound for Brantley with a minute to go. 18-5 the lead. What a start for Stony Brook. Marla King slowing it down. No, she'll try a three. That goes down. The Seawolves can't miss, and Maureen McGarity calls timeout for Holy Cross. Well, we talked about Stony Brook needing to come out to play with some urgency and some intensity. They certainly have done so. Up 21-5, to they are on a 16-3 run. And an 11 to nothing run over the last minute and 52 seconds. Pam, they've come out of the gate just firing. Man, on both ends of the floor, defense is leading to offense. They struggled early on to hit some shots. They got good quality shots. They just weren't going down, but they have certainly found their rhythm here late in the first quarter. Not only has Stony Brook scored 11 in the last two minutes or so, they haven't allowed a point as well in that span. As we look at Maureen McGarity, one of the best Really, at this mid-major level, it was at UNH for 10 years, so much success. Familiar with Stony Brook being in the America East. I know that about it. A tremendous basketball coach. She's in search of her 200th career victory, which she could obviously get tonight. They're going to have to turn things around to get back in this basketball game, though. Inside of a minute, Power Cassidy puts the ball on the floor. Goes over to Foreman. Good rotation defense for Stony Brook. Long three, McCormack can't hit. And an offensive rebound for Foreman. They'll slow it down now with Flanagan. 30 seconds to go in the quarter. 15 on the shot clock. Mismatch Foreman, inside. Three. That's too strong. And they didn't look for that mismatch inside. Just a long three that didn't fall. Now one for 11 for beyond the arc. And that was one of our points to start the game. Holy Cross needed to hit some three-pointers. Have not been able to do so yet. Five seconds to go in the quarter. Gonzalez picks it up. Clark, long three. It goes down. Time expires. Stony Brook on fire. Up 24 to five as the first quarter comes to a finish. Stop. Unbelievable. Just stop. <laughs> Just stop. Clark can do no wrong. That time a buzzer beating three pointer to extend this 19 point Stony Brook lead. Clark had attempted just one three coming into this game. She has two in the first quarter that have gone down. Yeah, you see the first one early on, and then she's going to end the first quarter with another triple. Nylon.
Stony Brook into the first quarter on a 14-0 run, leading 24-5, and a lot of it has to do with Kari Clark. Nine points in the first quarter, two threes went down. She is such a spark. Yeah, we talked about her shooting over 80% from the floor. She's three for six for a disappointing 50% here early <laughs> on, but two for three beyond the arc, and she's showing off all the skills. She's coming off a double-double at UMES. That was her second double-double of the year. They go inside, Janelle Allen off the glass. Good recognition there by Holy Cross. Stony Brook switching and inside, and Allen is going to have to take over the game down low, but Gonzalez has taken over. They're getting it from all angles. The perimeter shooting, the guards driving downhill, and Gonzalez goes to the line to try and complete the three-point play already with seven points. Shooting 75% from the stripe. Another one of those transfers who has just fit in perfectly. And we talked to Ashley Lankford prior to the game, and she said, we needed an athlete. We got one. We needed a shooter. We got one. We needed a low-post defender rebound. We got one. And, uh, I mean, their, their staff just constantly out there recruiting and picking up the right pieces that mesh and blend, and they've got great chemistry. Largest lead for Stony Brook. Up 20 points. They go to Grace Munt, coming in off the bench. Well, Langford was so quick to credit her staff and the ability to find the right player. Sometimes it is luck, but, well, they've lucked out with the right pieces here. What a start. I mean, this year, obviously, you know, Gonzalez and, and Clark. Power Cassidy. Fadeaway jumper from the paint, that won't fall. And Corley grabs the board. Keenan this year, and then last year you bring in Pittman, and you bring in uh, King. I mean, they really have just put the right pieces together. Holy Cross, three for 17 from the floor after that miss. Corley trying to save it, but that goes out of bounds on the sideline. Nine minutes to go in the half. 27-7 is the Seawolves lead. This is a team, Holy Cross, that went to the NCAA tournament last year. Won 24 games last year, won their first Patriot League title since 2007. And uh, lost to uh, number two Maryland in the NCAA tournament. But we talk about all their experience, but uh, they have not been down or have not played any. I mean, they played BC and, and, and had a lead going into the fourth quarter. But they have not played a team that has come out as determined and as hot as Stony Brook has here early on. The double team down low has worked, though, against Clark. They take it away from the Seawolves. Power Cassidy, long ball again. Won't go. Rebound tapped around. That goes into the hands of Kari Clark. Stony Brook slows it down offensively. Haven't seen much of Gigi Gonzalez. Clark puts it on the deck. Spins inside, but she walked first. Good call by Quinn Mathlin. Our other officials, Daryl Humphrey and Brock Matlock. They mentioned Gigi Gonzalez. She has spent most of this game on the bench. I'm not sure if it's an injury or something that Ashley Langford saw. But this is a deep Stony Brook team with a lot of talent, a lot of pieces, a lot of versatility. The entry pass to Janelle Allen. There's a foul called on Calise Corley. Corley with five rebounds already to lead the team. That's her first foul. And back to Gonzalez for a moment. Just one minute in this game. That was to start in the first quarter. Which makes you think that something, you know, something happened either, you know, either during the timeout or, or during the game where she may have gotten banged up a little bit. Um, you know, Gonzalez has been the leader of this Stony Brook basketball team for several years. Their captain, their uh, their spark plug. Kari Clark will come back in. Sharice Pittman gets a breather. From under the basket with 20 on the shot clock, they go to Power Cassidy. The Ireland native. Holy Cross did a tour there over the summer, so she got to play in the home country. Allen goes a little reverse lane with the left, but it rattles out, but she gets fouled again. She has drawn a foul on three consecutive <laughs> Sequences. Now, great low post skills, can finish with either hand, had a terrific game against UMass Lowell and Holy Cross victory last time out, and uh, not an easy cover down low. 
Misses the first. She's now 8 for 12 from the line this year, but only 5'11", though her coach Maureen McGarrity said she plays a lot bigger as the second one goes down. She's kind of an in-between matchup. It's a tough matchup. No, no doubt about it. her, along with Power Cassidy, have been staples of the offense for Holy Cross. Keenan puts it on the deck. Nice feed. No look to Clark, but she can't hold, hold it on. Not sure Clark was ready for that one. That was a nice little pocket pass by Keenan. Flanagan drops it off for Foreman, comes around the screen. They'll move it into the corner and get it to Allen. Down low, spins, goes through the chest of Corey Clark, and it spins around and drops in. And now Allen's starting to take over down low. Stoderberg may have to go to the double team. 27-10 and a walk called against Corley. 7-0-1 to go in the half, and Stony Brook turns it over. Holy Cross starting to show a little bit of life right here, and here we go back to Gigi Gonzalez. She will replace Keenan, and Stony Brook is on a almost three-minute scoring drought. Such a hot start. Had 24 points in the first frame. Only three here. Flanagan goes to the other side. Here's Munt. Picks up her dribble. Corner right in front of the bench. Under 10 on the shot clock. Power Cassidy asks for the screen. Gets it. Steps back behind the arc. And drains the triple. Textbook. Good ball screen. Clark a little late. We talked about her defensive prowess. Rotating, guarding one through five. That time a little late getting, a, getting her hand up. And Power Cassidy knocks down a triple for Holy Cross and uh, showing some life to Crusaders. 6-0 run for Holy Cross. Gigi Gonzalez back on the floor, as you mentioned. In possession with the ball. Little give and go. Gets through. And Janelle Allen blocked it. It last hit Gigi and went out of bounds. And Allen is fired up. Not sure what Maureen McGarrity told her team in between quarters, but it certainly has been effective. That is Stony Brook's eighth turnover. And now Holy Cross playing with a purpose. Five turnovers in the last three and a half minutes. 14-point lead for Stony Brook. Foreman stretching the floor. Can't hit the three. And the rebound last touched. It'll go out of bounds by Janelle Allen. And Stony Brook will get it back. Kara McCormack has re-entered. And Lindsey Berger will come in as well. Allen gets a breather. A well-deserved yeah. breather. Got Holy Cross back in his basketball game. She will not be on Maureen McGarrity's bench long. Here's Gonzalez trying to dribble through. Little jump stop and pull up. And got it to fall. Can really create her own shot match. She's got great athleticism, great bounce. Shoots it from mid-range, can get to the hoop, and also can knock down a triple. She eyes the floor so well to get to the right spot. Here she is on the defensive end going at Foreman, and she forces Foreman into a travel. And we've seen that a few times by both teams tonight, just taking that extra step, trying to get to the basket, and that's just a, you know, that's just a case of really good defense by both teams. The sophomore, Caitlin Flanagan, comes back in and replaces Simone Foreman. Flanagan started all 33 games as a freshman last year, a big piece. A member of the uh, uh, Patriot League all-rookie all team. Here's Pittman. Passes out. Gonzalez can't rebound for Gigi. <laughs> but Gonzalez picks it up. <laughs> Gets through. Physical. Can't finish the layup. Fighting through contact. Gonzalez ended up all the way behind the baseline, so it's five on four. Now she comes back into the play. Flanagan, the three ball. That won't go, and a rebound for King. Yeah, see a Seawolves underneath to grab that rebound. You saw all white, four white jerseys underneath grabbing that rebound. Stony Brook dominating the glass. Stony Brook up 17 to 11 on the glass. And that goes out of bounds, and we will step aside now. Stony Brook looking to hold on to this big lead, though Holy Cross throwing some jabs in there. It's 29-13 with 4.38 to go in the first half.
Stony Brook up big, 29-13 in the first half, and a lot of it has to do with some of these new faces that have entered this program this year. Zeta Gonzalez leads the way with 10 points. Corey Clark right behind her with nine. Pav, these pieces have just fit so well together. Oh, exactly what, what the, the Seawolves needed. Inside presence in Clark, the shooting ability of Keenan, the athleticism of Gonzalez. And where is another really good piece that has not got, has hurt early on in the season, but they expect a lot of things out of her. Janae Brantley, a terrific freshman. Dally Moreno, locally from Baldwin, was a highly re recruited athlete. Tore ACL last year at Baldwin High School, so she's still on the mend. Ashley Langford credits her staff of getting these players here. It's Holy Cross with the possession out of the timeout. Nice feed inside, and Power Cassidy finishes on the assist from Berger. The movement on offense by Holy Cross is very efficient. They create a lot of mismatches, and that time, once again, on the switch, Power Cassidy just too big and too strong inside. Holy Cross leading 10-5 to in the quarter. Marla King, Euro step, gets through and finishes the deuce. May have gotten oh, gun away with an, an extra step right there on the Euro, but a nice move to the hoop. 16-point lead for the Seawolves inside of four minutes in the half. They feed inside. Power Cassidy again turns and can't finish. Pittman grabs the board. Gigi Gonzalez brings it up. Let's see if Gonzalez can get on track right now. No points in five minutes, 0 for 2. Has struggled a little bit. Pittman, no points as well. Only 0 for 1. She got fouled there. So she'll go to the line for 2. And we talked with Ashley Langford about getting these players here. How do you sell Stony Brook? It's a tough sell. It's far out east on Long Island. And not much to do around. But she said when these players come on campus, then they really have a good shot. Oh, absolutely. Well, you know what? You know the thing that helps the most? Winning. <laughs> and Stony Brook... Seawolves women basketball have won for a long time here. They've got a great reputation, great coaching over the last, you know, decade and a half, two de you know, 15 years, and uh, they've won a lot. And uh, winning always attracts good players. They're attracted to the school, the academics, the culture on the basketball program. So uh, once they get them here, it's an easy sell. So Pittman drains that one, one of two on the trip. And now a 17-point lead with about three and a half to go. And you think about where these players came from, really aside from V. Keenan, which down the road in New Jersey at Seton Hall, the others, Kari Clark from Denver coming over from <laughs> Loyola Marymount, and then Gonzalez, Zeta Gonzalez, a Florida native, transfers from her home state of FIU. Yeah, where's a local kid out of Queens as well? But, yeah, they're, they're recruiting, uh, you know, like a, like a Power 5 school across the country. Going out all over the place to get the right pieces, and it's worked. McCormick for three, off the window. And a rebound for King. Two for 16 for the Crusaders. Gonzalez with speed. She is so quick and gets downhill to finish the two. Let's see if that gets Gigi Gonzalez on track on the offensive end. It doesn't take her long to heat up. Her first points, and Stony Brook on a 5-0 run. And Allen turns it over with steps. I think part of the success for Stony Brook over the years is they always have answers. Teams will come back, they'll fight, they may even take a large lead, but Stony Brook always seems to figure it out, has the end, they're very deep, they're well conditioned, they get after it in crunch time, and uh, that has been a, a model of their success. McCormick pressing up on Gigi, and she'll blow by her. Goes baseline, kicks it out for Brantley. Airballed on the three. And the rebound goes for Flanagan. Up the floor, Foreman slows it down. McCormick pulls the trigger, and that won't go. Clark pulls down the long rebound again. Holy Cross is getting good open looks at the three, just continues unable to get him to go. Another good look for Brantley. She'll drop that off inside. Such a good pass. And Corey Clark, so poised, finishes the deuce, and a timeout again for Holy Cross, they'll take a 30 second timeout. Brantley had an open look at a three, just a great extra pass, a casual just little look inside and a finish. And then again, this is what makes Stony Brook so good, unselfish play as they are on a 7-0 run. Clark into double figures now with 11 points. She's got three rebounds and just a terrific effort for her to start this game. And, and you talk about the freshman giving that pass off to a graduate student, Janae Brantley. <laughs> 
her experience level is very, very limited considering she's had what four games in her collegiate career but she just plays like a veteran well oh, absolutely she's coming she comes out again as a, as a highly recruited athlete a tremendous high school score can shoot the basketball high iq can play multiple positions one two and and a little bit of a small forward but the versatile player and that's the key here to stony but they're so versatile inside none none more so maybe than Sharice Pittman mm -hmm. you know can play the point can play the big can shoot the I mean yep. this is just a team full of versatile basketball players on both ends well Stony Brook is up 36 to 15 Gigi Gonzalez has two points Sharice Pittman has one point these are the two players on the preseason all-conference team <laughs> and balance I forget <laughs> to use that big word balance here's Holy Cross with about two minutes to go looking to get it into Allen They'll go back up top. Power Cassidy finally hits. Rona Power Cassidy with her second triple. She's two for seven from out there. Inside for Clark. Passes out. Brantley corner triple. Down it goes. Stony Brook answers back, and it's the freshman Brantley. Well, Clark returns the favor. The double team came quickly, kicked it out to Brantley. Wide open look, knocked down. Brantley with five points off the bench in the first half. Allen going to work down low, spins, turns, rattles it down. Holy Cross looking maybe to extend the pressure a little bit, create a turnover, almost got one there on Gonzalez. A minute to go in the half, Gonzalez down the lane, got blocked by Flanagan, ball on the deck, and it goes into the hands of McCormick. Passes out to Flanagan. Nice bounce pass, Foreman has it now. She'll kick out, top of the key. Rona Power Cassidy inside for Allen in the high post. Goes down the lane. Uses the window. What a finish. And I really think Stonerberg may have to decide to double down on Allen. Just too tough inside. 30 seconds just about in the half. Stony Brook gets across the timeline. King straight away. Won't go. Clark fighting for the rebound. Punches it out. And a foul is called against Kari Clark on... Some contact there going after the rebound. A big possession here for Holy Cross. 22 seconds left to go in a half. Down 17. You want to get a good look. Would love to get would love to get a good look at a three. Get a little momentum heading into halftime. Clark picks up her second, so she'll head to the bench. 20 seconds. Shot clock is turned off. Holy Cross looks to enter the break with some momentum. Down 17. Foreman. Goes to Allen. Allen dribbles the ball. Handoff. Power Cassidy. Two seconds to go. Gets down the lane. Fade away off the glass. Just falls out, but a good look. And Stony Brook a lot to be happy with getting a stop there and also leading by 17 at halftime. Ah, it's been a great effort. We talked about urgency, and uh, Stony Brook certainly came into this game with a lot of urgency and has played so well on both ends. 39-22. Kari Clark leads the way with 11, and Zeta Gonzalez right behind her with 10. Just a terrific effort in the first half, and we'll have a little bit more at halftime, so stay with us on Flow Hoops. There's no stopping us now. Watch what we do next. CAA champions are built by commitment, dedication, and courage. CAA champions live on the court, on the pitch, on the track, on the field and in the pool. CAA champions live on Flow Sports. My biggest fear was losing my life, and I am a three time cancer survivor. They cured me. I didn't think it was possible when I heard what I had lung cancer. You want to hold on to every second and spend more time with your family. And I'm living the way I should be living, not worrying about 
going for treatment because it's cured. And I'll be grateful for New York Cancer for that for the rest of my life. There are jobs and then there are careers. Build your future at Riverhead Building Supply, a family-owned company in business for over 70 years. Riverhead Building Supply has openings in all areas, from seasonal jobs to full-time careers. We need CDL drivers, yardmen, salespeople, and purchasing and IT support. Join a booming industry. Apply now at rbscorp.com slash careers. At Stony Brook University, unleashing our goal. From the studios at the School of Communication and Journalism, welcome to the Stony Brook Media Group Halftime Report, brought to you by Tropical Smoothie Cafe. I'm Mackenzie Yetto. On campus, we welcome Global Eats, a day of international bites in campus dining halls. From 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. on November 16th, Seawolves had the opportunity to try out international meals curated by SBU Eats chefs. The cuisines included tastes of Japan, India, and Germany here at East and West Side Dining Halls. For the 23rd year, Stony Brook held its annual Passport to the World event as snacks from around the world were put on full display. Our very own A.O. Kwan has the details. Hello, Sea Wolves and Mayo Kwan. We here in the Mavell Library South Lobby celebrating the International Education Week. Behind me is Passport to the World, where international students showcase their home countries. This annual event is designed to promote international understanding and support educational exchange. Twelve countries participated in this event. Students can learn local customs and greetings and aid country stamps to the SBU Passport. They also provide international candies as well. This is a SBU passport. Four stamps can exchange a bag of freshly popped popcorn. I'm Michelle Schenke. I'm Assistant Director of International Student and Scholar Services in the Office of Global Affairs. So this event is part of International Education Week, which is sponsored by the U.S. Department of State and the um, U.S. Uh, Department of Education. And this event is really to introduce different countries and cultures to the students on campus here at Stony Brook. We have our exchange students, our intensive English center students, and some of our just regular international students here representing their country. This week's MVP is Stony Brook's Food Pantry. For the past decade, it has allowed food insecure members of the university community to concentrate on their goals by providing them with nutritious, cost-free provisions. We want to make sure our students, staff, and faculty are able to focus on what they came here for, said Emily Snyder, Director of the Department of Student Community Development. And she added, we are focused on communicating that it's okay to ask for help. Anyone with an SBU ID card is invited to take advantage of the pantry, which can see upwards of 15 to 20 visitors a day. That's all from us in the studio. We'll get you back out to Island Federal Arena for first half stats and analysis right after this.
to Island Federal Arena at the half. And Stony Brook leading 39-22 as we take a look at some of the first half numbers. Just tremendous job by Stony Brook really on the offensive end. Oh, absolutely. And these, both teams started off slow, but Stony Brook really heated up there, shooting 50% from beyond the arc as they've done almost all season long. You see the three, by, three for 18 for Holy Cross. And a lot of those were good open looks. They need to make some of those shots in the second half if they're going to get back in this basketball game. Six threes for Stony Brook. Five different players hit them. Just so much balance. And not, not a lot of contributions out of two of their main players in Sharice Pittman and Gigi Gonzalez. You talk about the balance, Matt. So now we'll look at some highlights from the first half. Just terrific effort all around. Early on, Zeta Gonzalez got Stony Brook going. That time Clark with the triple actually, excuse me, to start one of two triples that she had in the first half. She was sensational on both ends of the floor for Stony Brook. Some good movement, good ball movement. Brantley inside to Clark once again. And so that's the Jakes 58 player of the half, Kari Clark. 11 points, three rebounds, four for seven from the floor. I mean, what she's doing right now, I don't know if Ashley Langford and, and her staff expected this or if they thought she'd be this good, but I mean, she has just been terrific. Two double-doubles, she's averaging almost 20 points, she's averaging almost 10 rebounds pretty ridiculous. No, it certainly is, and I mean, they knew they had a good one. I came to practice early on in the season, and I was really obviously a transfer. I wasn't, you know, aware of her, you know, her skills over at Loyola Marymount, but she was so impressive in that practice. She did it all, and she's now carrying it over into the season. She was the CAA Player of the Week last week. She might be well on her <laughs> way to two straight to start the season, but Stony Brook is up by 17 at the half, and they will look to take down Holy Cross and win their fourth straight to start the season. When we come back on Flow Hoops, we'll have the second half.
Stony Brook University, unleashing our goals and exceeding expectations. Stony Brook is now ranked number one among public universities in New York, 26th among public universities, and 58th among national universities. Our highest rankings ever from U.S. News and World Report. There's no stopping us now. Watch what we do next. What a year it's been at Stony Brook University. Selected as the anchor institution of the New York Climate Exchange, recognized for innovation and excellence, home to today and tomorrow's research pioneers and world-renowned breakthrough prize winners, chosen by the best and brightest students from around the world to fuel their passions and dreams. There's no stopping us now. Watch what we do next. Stony Brook leads 39-22 at the break. Let's take a look at how we got here, Pat. Absolutely, and uh, Zeta Gonzalez got Stony Brook going. She had five quick early points. That had a beautiful lay. She had 10 in the first half. About a second into checking into the game, V. Keenan knocks down her patented triple from the corner. Holy Cross struggled from beyond the arc. That time, Karen McCormick knocks down one of the only three threes. But on the other end, Clark answers with a three. Holy Cross got going a little bit inside. Janelle Allen got some buckets with some beautiful moves. Got, got Holy Cross a little bit back into this basketball game. But Stony Brook was able to answer on the other end. We see the bureau, beautiful Euro step by Marla King. And some real good extra passing. Brantley inside to Clark to end the half. Well, Pav, what does Stony Brook need to continue to do to hold on to this and, and get a W? And then what does Holy Cross have to do to get back in this? Well, Stony Brook has to continue to play with that intensity that they came out with in the first half on both ends of the floor. I mean, they rotated ferociously on the defensive end, shared the basketball, played some really good basketball in the first half. And uh, now Holy Cross has gotten some really good movement. They're going inside, they're going outside. They're just missing shots. You can't go three for 18 against a team like Stony Brook from the perimeter and expect to win a basketball game. And only made nine field goals as a whole in the first half. But it'll be Stony Brook with the first possession of the second half. Clark. Hands off for Zeta Gonzalez, a step back. She thought about it, and they'll pass it around to Gigi Gonzalez. They get it into Clark. She's double teamed and loses it. Diving for it on the deck with McCormack, and a jump ball will give it back to the Crusaders. You know what? If there's a, if there's a basketball on the floor and Karen McCormack is diving for it, I got to believe she's coming up. But one of the toughest competitors I've ever, I've ever watched. I've seen her play since she's been about in the third or second grade. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it's certainly nice to see a local product do good. Well, she comes from a basketball family here on Long Island from Smithtown. Her father, Jim, is the all-time assist leader at St. John's College. St. Joseph's College. Or St. Joseph's, rather, on Long Island as she drains a huge three to start off this second half. Yeah, it plays with a lot of fire. And she's done a nice job so far defensively. Pittman finds a way to get it down. <laughs> Pittman very quiet in the first half. That's only her third point of the game. Drew a little contact and was able to finish through that contact. McCormick scored over 1,500 points in high school at St. John the Baptist. As she passes it off Gonzalez's foot, that's a kickball violation. She was three-time offensive MVP there. Oh, a storied high school career and, uh, you know, knew that Holy Cross was the perfect fit for her. And she's had, she's had a few injuries throughout her career finally fully healthy for the Crusaders. Power Cassidy off the inbound, drains the catch and shoot. Talk yeah. about a pretty good career. Power Cassidy has had a sensational career, as you mentioned, out of Dublin, Ireland for Holy Cross. Those two are two of the three captains as Pittman misses the long three. And an offensive rebound for Khalees Corley. Janelle Allen, the other tri-captain group for Holy Cross. Gonzalez, pretty move, but can't finish. From inside the paint, McCormick 
Nice feed for Flanagan, and she dribbles it off her foot out of bounds. Yeah, good look up ahead. Careless dribbling by Flanagan, and another turnover for Holy Cross. Agent Zero dribbling the ball up the floor. A little hot potato action at the top. And she'll drive inside. Looks to dish off to Clark. Mismatch now with Allen on Gigi. And she's fouled going up for the shot. She'll get two from the line. Yeah, the officials letting them play a little bit. I thought Gonzalez got hit on the drive. A beautiful little dish inside. Clark didn't get it to go initially, but she drew the contact, and she will head to the free throw line. That foul is on Kara McCormick. That's her third. But nobody at the scorer's table yet to take her out. Clark is at the line. She's one for one today. Makes the first, 12 points for Kari, four rebounds, an assist and a steal as well in 16 minutes of action. It's both and gives Stony Brook a 43-27 lead with eight minutes to go in the third quarter. Some real important minutes right here for Holy Cross. They want to try and cut this lead into single digits heading into the fourth quarter. If not, this is a Stony Brook team that really knows how to close. Foreman straight away. That won't go. Catches air and goes out on the baseline back to the Seawolves. Well, Stony Brook tends to have some of those lulls in the third quarter where their opponent outplays them. And then in the fourth quarter, they run away with it. And they close it out. Gonzalez fade away. Leaves it short, and Foreman gets the rebound. Didn't love that shot selection. They had a really tough shot there for Gonzalez to fade away along the baseline. McCormack reversed. That's blocked by Clark on the rejection. Into the hands of Gigi. Pushing the floor. Her pass is tipped by McCormack, getting her hands in the lane. And the Seawolves will inbound from under the basket. Good hustle back there by McCormack to break that up. Gonzalez goes up top for Pittman. Here's Corley. Now Gonzalez, she tries a three, can't hit, and Allen and Power Cassidy converge. It's Allen for the rebound. McCormack, hands off to Power Cassidy. Now Foreman pulls up, leaves it too strong, and Clark pulls down the rebound. That's her fifth. Stoner was doing a really nice job of holding Holy Cross to one and done on the offensive end. Well, Gonzalez just threw that over the cylinder, and Pittman was fouled going for the rebound. That'll stay here. Now this is a Holy Cross team that has missed a whole bunch of shots, and they only have three offensive rebounds. So Starnerbrook doing a good job boxing out, blocking out, corralling the rebound, and that's obviously the key. You know, in any Ashley Lankford coach team, they want to dominate the glass, and that creates all kind of offensive transition opportunities. That foul was on Flanagan, her first. Corley into the corner. Brentley for a three. Too strong, and it heads out of bounds. That's 0 for their last seven from the floor. Stony Brook. 43-27, 640 to go in the third quarter. Pace has slowed a little bit here, Matt, in the, in the third quarter. It was certainly end-to-end -end action in the first half. Both teams kind of slowing it down a little bit, running through their stuff. Struggling a little bit on the offensive end. McCormick sneaks through and throws it off the window and finishes the deuce. Ah, some nice English off the glass by McCormick. Playing in front of her friends and family here, about 60 people on hand, and what a dump off from Gonzalez to Pittman. And that's a second beautiful dish inside by Gigi Gonzalez off the dribble penetration. Pittman now up to five points with four rebounds. Here's Grace Munt looking to get some more out of her off the bench. She drives. Rejected by Pittman. And a loose ball out of bounds against Holy Cross. Last touch by Munt. And the Seawolves get it back. And Pittman may have gotten away with a little contact there, but Stonerberg certainly swarming on the defensive end. Pittman and Clark, such a great job of rotating and blocking shots, deflecting and altering shots inside. They can both guard up at the perimeter. They can both guard down low by the rim. That allows Stoner to be so efficient defensively. They can switch one through five with the athleticism of Clark and Pittman. 
Gonzalez drives the lane. Throws it up. Pittman corrals. Goes off the window. Can't hit. Gets her own rebound. Hits the deck. Looking for somebody. It's Keenan. Now Gonzalez with 15 goes to King. Pittman with five rebounds. King is rejected. I have not liked the shot selection by Stoinerbuck here in the third quarter. They've taken some four shots. Need to settle down, share the basketball. King will give it to Gonzalez to slow it down. Inside of five minutes. Keenan hands off to Gigi. Gets a screen from Pittman. King in the corner. Tries the three. Too strong. Power Cassidy the long rebound. And she gets fouled by Marla King. And that'll bring us to a timeout. But 45-29. Stony Brook is in front here in the third quarter. And Pav, just the pace has, has slowed down a little bit. A couple yeah. of missed shots from both sides. It's come, it's come to a screeching halt. Both teams struggled on the offensive end. Not scoring a lot of points. And, uh, you know, defense is going to win this game for Stony Brook. They just have to continue to box out, contest all shots, whether they be threes or drives to the basket. And, uh, you know, got to get a, in, into a little bit of a rhythm on the offensive end. Stony Brook is one for its last 12 from the floor, and Holy Cross has outscored them 7-6 to six in the third quarter. 4.42 left in the frame. We'll be back. Well, we're at Island Federal Arena just down the road from where Kara McCormack grew up in Smithtown, and she has a whole group here to see her today. Yeah, about 50, 60 family members. Can't see mom and dad in the crowd. Maybe they span it out there a little bit. Oh, there they are right in front there, but a lot of purple sitting behind us. Almost feels like a Holy <laughs> Cross home game. A lot of noise when she touches the ball, and and especially when it goes down. And they've got the entire St. John the Baptist High School team along with Kate Gordon here. So uh, a lot of fans here to see Kate, to, excuse me, to see McCormick play. Nice feed inside for Janelle Allen. And if they could get that back into the game, well, they could have a chance to come back a little bit. Yeah, Allen took over a little bit there in the second quarter to get Holy Cross back in the game. Gonzalez for the answer. She can't hit. Allen fighting for it. On the deck, it's King and a jump ball. We'll give it to Stony Brook. 
Bodies flying all over the place. Uh, again, we talked about, you know, Karen McCormick's tenacity. This is a Stony Brook team that really gets after. If there's a loose ball, you're going to see a whole host of bodies diving on it for the Seawolves. Play with urgency. It's one of the keys for Ashley Langford's group. They do all the little things, Matt. They take charges. They dive on loose balls. They get offensive rebounds. They make the extra pass. A lot, of, a lot in the recipe of success. King with a crossover gets through, and a charge is called, an offensive foul. And Janelle Allen again, what makes her so good down there? Well, I mean, she's, she's a high IQ player, great rotation. Both King and Allen a little banged up, limping gingerly down the court as King will take a seat on the bench. But she's an experienced basketball player, she's a senior, knows how to play the game, well coached, well schooled, and uh, that time some beautiful rotation on the defensive end. Munt again in off the bench. They go to Berger at the perimeter. Now Allen up top. Foreman gets freed up. The ball kind of died up on the rim there, but it did not fall. Yeah, Foreman's had a tough night. She's 0 for 8 uh, so far that time. Unlucky roll. And a foul was called against Stony Brook. So this will go from under the basket. The foul was on Pittman, her second. Flanagan, off ball screen, gets freed up, can't hit the three. Clark fighting for it with Allen. And a jump ball will give it back to the Crusaders. A lot some of nice, tie-ups down low. Absolutely, some nice action offensively there by Holy Cross, but once again, they come up empty from beyond the arc, a wide open look for Flanagan, just left it short. 45-31, the Seawolves in front with 325 left in the third frame. Looking for their fourth straight win to start the season in non-conference play. Berger stretching the floor, can't hit, and Brantley flies in for the rebound to go along with her four assists. Gonzalez with speed, dumps it off. Clark finishes. Pocket pass from Gigi. A great job by Gonzalez with the recognition. She's been able to get in the paint here in the third quarter. Not scoring for herself, but for creating for teammates. Lauren Fillion is in the game for Stony Brook as well. That's a beautiful look. Flanagan goes up top and finds Berger at six foot two to finish. Fourteen point lead. Gonzalez in the paint, steps through, too strong off the window. Berger the rebound. Here comes Holy Cross. Munt in transition. Flanagan goes inside. Berger beautiful back down on Fillion, and she gets the deuce. And Berger can provide a spark off the bench. Has gotten better year in and year out, and can really finish around the basket. Holy Cross showing a little zone right now. They've switched up the look. Here's Clark. Bounces it. Double teamed. And traveled. <laughs> Ashley Langford knew the double team is coming on her. She's been so effective. Holy Cross well coached. They're going to double team her. And at times she's had trouble. Now that's the 11th turnover there by Stoney. But great rotation there by Berger. Stood her ground as soon as Clark went to the spin move. And Ashley Langford wants to talk this over as the Crusaders down 12. 47-35. And it started moments ago with that spark from Allen getting back in and that just the presence down low for her both on the offensive and defensive ends. And they're doing a nice job getting the ball inside is Holy Cross. So we'll step aside here on Flow from Island Federal Arena. I'm Chris, and I'm here to talk about Island Federal's cash back checking. And I'm Bob from National Big Bank, here to talk about our free checking. What's that? Well, it's free as long as you adhere to our terms and conditions. Oh my, and if you don't? We remind you with a convenience fee. 
Doesn't sound very convenient. No, it's not. Well, Island Federal is home to the cashback checking account. Cashback every time you use your debit card. No minimum balance, no monthly fees. Island Federal, you can bank on the power of if. where you play at Jake's 58 Casino Hotel. The right way to top a sub is with real red wine vinegar made from red grapes and no food coloring. And the right way to film it is in slow motion, obviously. Because authentic ingredients make a sub above. Holy Cross went to the NCAA tournament last year, Patriot League tournament champions, and they bring almost everyone back this season, Pav. You see that 93% of your scoring coming back, and when you've got an outstanding coach like McGarrity, you've got the chemistry, you've got the toughness, that's going to lead to a lot of positives going into the end. Last year, hey, 13-5 in the Patriot League, still got it done, got it to the NCAA, lost to the number two seed, Maryland, but certainly look for these Crusaders with a really good chance to get back in March. McGarity in her fourth season at Holy Cross since coming over from UNH, where she spent a decade as the head coach. Terrific player was Maureen McGarity. Her dad, Dave McGarity, a longtime coach at Marist and at Army, and uh, she certainly learned a lot from the great Dave McGarity. Foul was called against Corley a moment ago. That's her second. Well, it's her fourth season, so that means these seniors for Holy Cross came in with her. And a good thing they all have a chance to come back if they'd like for their fifth season. <laughs> nice feed from Berger again. Big to big. Finding Allen for the, for the layup. And Holy Cross continues to execute on the offensive end. They're getting some good shots around the basket, as we mentioned. Missed a lot of open jumpers, or else this may be a different game. Stonerbrook needs to answer. Clark spins and turns and scores. She is just so poised down low. And that ends a 6-0 Holy Cross run. And Back when you to look, a 12-point lead. And when you're looking for answers, I certainly <laughs> try to find the ball, give the ball to Clark. Clark has 15 points. They're now 17 and five rebounds. And Berger finishes the deuce. She's had a terrific day off the bench. Well, she had a double-double the other night, 13 points and 12 rebounds against Brown. So she's certainly capable. Gonzalez raining from long range. Big bucket by Zeta Gonzalez. See this turns the tide back into Stony Brook's favor. Up 13 late here in the third. Holy Cross looking for a response. Power Cassidy with 10. Looking for more. Too strong. King gets the nice rebound. Shot clock and game clock, about a two-second difference. Gigi Gonzalez doesn't care. She goes quick, can't finish, and a foul called against Kari Clark going after the rebound. That's her third, and a big one. I didn't like that decision there by Gigi Gonzalez. Went a little bit too quick. I know maybe they're trying for a two-for-one, but that's a tough shot right there. I'd love to have seen them hold it out, get that last shot with about six seconds left to go here in the third quarter. Now you send Holy Cross to the free throw line with a chance to cut into this lead. 25 and 8 tenths of a second to go in the quarter. The Seawolves are up by 13. Berger is at the line. She's 8 for 10 on the year. Now 9 for 11. And she has 9 points. That's over her season average now. It's both into double figures. Ten points off the bench for Berger. Three rebounds, three assists, and a block. And she's been a big part of the, year of the comeback by Holy Cross. Her, along with Allen inside, have been doing work. Well, Stony Brook will have an opportunity for the final shot of the frame. 20 seconds to go. Up 11. Going to look for a little high ball action right here. Stony Brook, excuse me, Holy Cross showing a little zone. 
but there'll definitely be a ball screen somewhere along the line. They go for Pittman, right around the free throw line. Picks up her dribble, fades with five. Won't go, rebound, Foreman. She'll try and that will go nowhere fast, but it's 52-41. Stony Brook couldn't score there, but they've held on to this lead. It stayed double figures. No, I like the way Holy Cross came out there in the third quarter, made some good adjustments on a defensive end, slowed the tempo down. They outscored Stony Brook 19-13 in that quarter, and they're back in this basketball game. I talked about trying to get it to single digits, down 11. Holy Cross certainly has a chance to win this basketball game. Yeah, very close to single digits. We got a new ball game going in to the final 10 minutes, but that's where Stony Brook has really done a great job in the fourth quarter all year. Well, fourth quarter action is next right here on Flow. Stay with us. Fourth quarter action set to go, 52-41 Stony Brook in front. And as we take a look at the play of the game, the smart play of the game, presented by Ticket Smarter. You mentioned Gigi Gonzalez has been able to get to the basket, get inside, and has some beautiful dimes in that time to Clark. Hey, look at the vision, the great delivery of the pass with the left hand, and uh, Clark knows to do it when she gets there. The smart play of the game was brought to you by Ticket Smarter, the best place to find tickets to the hottest sports, concerts, and live events near you. Visit TicketSmarter.com or download the app to secure your tickets now. And Pav, Gigi only two points, one for ten from the floor, but she can make impact plays like that and make a pass like that whenever they need it. No, no doubt about it. Her ability to push and transition, her vision, her decision-making. V. Keenan. Haven't seen much of her since that first three she made in the first quarter. Dribble drive, floater, too strong. Rebound for Simone Foreman. Nice move there by Keenan, the floater. You have to go out and contest the triple. Good pump fake, just a little long. Holy Cross is on a 23-13 run since the Seawolves had their largest lead of 21 points. And a deuce for Foreman inside the paint, make it a 25-13 run since that happened. And here's those single digits we spoke about. Momentum all Holy Cross right now. Nine minutes to go, nine point lead for the Seawolves. Corley up at the top. These first few minutes are so important for Stony Brook. They have to get on track offensively. Gonzalez, runner, no good. Pittman, the offensive rebound, gets blocked, got it back, can't finish. Somehow it finds her again, and she gets fouled. That'll go on the floor under the basket. Really good defense inside there by Power Cassidy. 
And Megan McGarity looking for the travel. Thought there was a little shuffling of the feet there by Stony Brook. Keenan up top for three. Might have gotten tipped in the air by Berger. Yeah, great contest there by Berger. Comes out. Flying into McCormack. The three ball. It rains down. For the whole section behind us just jumped out of their seats as the Smithtown native hits the three. And we talked about it. This is almost a home game for the Crusaders. It's a six-point ball game. It's the closest it's been in quite a while. Stony Brook was up by 21. Corley shuffled the feet. Turnover, Stony Brook, and a two-possession game. It goes back to Holy Cross. And what do we have here? A foul. I don't know if they called a the foul. I'm not sure what the officials called. Daryl Humphrey was motioning to the sidelines. And he's going to back, go back to Stony Brook basketball. I'm not exactly sure what the call was. Foul on Foreman. That's her first. Oh, they called a foul before Khalees Corley traveled. So that's, that's the clarification. And uh, here we are, Stony Brook basketball. Quinn Mathlin coming over with the clarification. We appreciate that. So here's Gonzalez if the Seawolves get another chance and catch a big break on that potential turnover. Pittman drives in, goes high off the glass, rattles in and out. It's just not Pittman's day right now offensively. She's two for eight. And after a, a, a half of open looks after open looks, Stonebrook is taking contested shots almost every time down the floor. Give Holy Cross defense a lot of credit. Holy Cross turns it over. Pittman for three. That won't go, but an offensive rebound for Zeta Gonzalez, and she'll pull it out. That was a real good look for Pittman. No, wide open triple usually knocks that down. 0 for 3 from beyond the arc now, and 2 for 9 from the floor. Gonzalez with 5. Dips it inside. That's taken away by Berger. Still a 6-point ball game. Just over 7 minutes to play. Stony Brook's 12th turnover right there. Screen from Berger. McCormack goes to Power Cassidy. Now to Flanagan. Berger goes up inside. That's tipped around. And McCormack comes out of nowhere to steal it back. Power Cassidy, the three, won't go too long. And Corley will let it dribble out of bounds. Janae Brantley comes back in. Marla King is in. Pittman and Zeta Gonzalez take a seat. And now Holy Cross brings in Janelle Allen. And they send Berger to the bench. Well, this is Stony Brook's strength, their depth. And they wear you out in the fourth quarter. 6.45 left to play. Let's see how much Holy Cross has left in the tank. King in the post. Passes out. Clark, three ball again. Won't go. Too short. And McCormack steals it from King. Pulls up from three. Can't hit. Good looking shot, though. It, had, it was on line. Maybe a little quick there by McCormick. Thought she maybe should have settled down a little bit and looked for a trailer. Stony Brook up six. Gonzalez passes out to Clark. And a whistle. Well, both teams with Stony Brook having cooled off now. Holy Cross started to heat up a little bit. They're both shooting right around 37% from the floor. Certainly did not look like that was going to be the case as Stoner was just on fire in the first half. McCormack just picked up her fourth foul, so she takes a seat. Here's Brentley off the inbound. Gets through, tucks it under, tries to finish off the glass and can't. And the rebound rolls out towards the bench, picked up by Flanagan. Flanagan, no points today, but six assists and two rebounds. After 39 points in the first half, Stonerbrook has only third, scored 13 here in the second half. Here's Munt for three. Way off. And that goes out. Five for, excuse me, from beyond New York, Holy Cross, five for 24. And has had some open looks. And with the Stony Brook Seawolves going ice cold here in the second half, they're only shooting seven for 21 from out there, 33%. But a team that came into today shooting 40% from deep. And Stony Brook searching for some answers here on the offensive end. Here's Gonzalez with five and a half. Pulls up from the elbow and got it. 
Such a good shot when they needed it most. Great elevation, goes up so straight and strong. Great follow through, a terrific athlete. Gonzalez has had a whale of a basketball game tonight. She's got 15, six for 10 from, from the floor. 54-46, power Cassidy, the tray. Off the iron, offensive rebound for Foreman. Looking to get it inside for Allen, here she goes. Faces up on Clark, uses the body, and finishes! Inside of five minutes, it's back to a six-point ball game. And Allen, great use of the body. Initiated the contact and finished. Gonzalez won't hit on the three. A little bit too strong, another good look though. Holy Cross with a chance to cut this to a one possession game. The deficit has felt like six for so long. And it went back to eight, now six again. Flanagan up top, gets inside for Allen. A lot of contact, Clark dropped to the deck. A flop potentially could have been called there. They won't stop the game, though. There was some contact there, and Allen misses what may have been her easiest shot she had all yeah. night. When Clark went down, it was a wide-open lane, and, and Allen looked, asking the officials, where's the flop? But there was some contact there, so I don't know if it was a flop. You know, she really, you know, did absorb some contact, did Clark. Well, Allen couldn't hit. They come down on the other way, and King gets fouled. So Marla King sends us to... A break. It's 54-48. Stony Brook now looking to cling on to what would be their, their fourth straight win. They were up by 21 at one point in this ball game. What looked like an offensive masterpiece for the Seawolves early on has uh, turned into uh, you know some finger painting on the offensive end. Exciting finish. Do up. Stay with us on Flow Hoops. At Stony Brook Cancer Center, we don't just conduct clinical trials; we create them. All so Cali can keep trying new things. We are a multidisciplinary team caring for you from every angle so Jim can find just the right one. We develop highly individualized leading edge cancer treatments so Sarah can follow her passions. Using our strength to help you regain yours, we are Stony Brook Medicine. All we do is all for you. At Stony Brook Medicine, we pioneered a faster way to recover from joint surgery so Greg barely missed a step. We have a level one trauma center, the highest in the region, so Frank can keep playing once upon a time. We are home to a nationally recognized diabetes center, so Anita never misses a celebration. Working together to make your life stronger. We are Stony Brook Medicine. All we do is all for you. I think one of the things that makes it different to work here as a nurse or a nursing assistant is the teamwork that is out there amongst the staff. We work together with one mission in common, and that's to take care of our veterans and their families. If this is my small way of helping them back, my career as a nurse is rewarded. The opportunities here for professional growth, our health insurance salaries can't be compared in any other facility. I've been here 11 years. I think it speaks for itself. Please consider working at the Long Island State Veterans Home because we do make a difference in people's lives each and every day. At Stony Brook Neurosciences Institute, we treat complex conditions involving the brain so Manny can keep creating new memories. We never stop innovating ways to treat neurological... What a year it's been at Stony Brook University, unleashing our goals and exceeding expectations. Stony Brook is now ranked number one among public universities in New York, 26th among public universities, and 58th among national universities. Our highest rankings ever from U.S. News and World Report. There's no stopping us now. Marla King heads to the free throw line as we come back in the fourth quarter. Stony Brook will be back at home on Wednesday to continue this two-game homestand. They'll play Delaware State at noon on SNY and Flow Hoops. We'll be here for that one. On uh, the day before Thanksgiving. A lot of work to be done tonight still, though, for the Seawolves. They have been outscored after that initial 24-5 to first quarter. They've been outscored the last three quarters, and they cling on, as you mentioned, a, to a six-point lead. Big free throws right here from Marla King. The Seawolves shooting 20% from the floor in the second half. Six for 30. They've only scored two points here in the fourth quarter. And King can't hit from the free throw line. Well, 
This is where free throws become that much more important. Right now a six point ball game. King rattles the second one. 55-48. And that's big, it makes it a, a three possession game right now. And when you get down the last few minutes of the game, that's really the most important. You look at the amount of possessions. Allen is up at the perimeter. She has 15 points. McCormick back in the game with four fouls. Power Cassidy gets the screen from Berger. Gets inside, dishes out. And Foreman traveled, hit the shot, doesn't count. A turnover, a crucial one. It goes back to Stony Brook, and Pittman comes back in. 3.50 remaining, 55-48. A seven-point Seawolves lead. Zeta Gonzalez has it around the perimeter. They go to Pittman. Dangerous pass back up top. Gonzalez fighting through two defenders, left it short. Great job by Power Cassidy, rotating over, walling up, creating that tough shot. Looking to insert for Allen, McCormack. Got it to her, she corrals and got fouled by Pittman on the entry pass. That's Stony Brook's only their first foul here in the fourth quarter. Holy Cross has four, so that may play a big role here down the stretch with 3.16 left to go. So this will be inbounded from under the basket. Flanagan comes back in. 3.16 remaining. Got to get it in. She does to Allen. Going right at Pittman. Spins. Got it blocked. And it'll stay here with Holy Cross with 14 on the shot clock. Yeah, good hands there by Pittman. Allen loves to go to the basket, bury her shoulder, and spin to either side. Good recognition there by Pittman. Power Cassidy dumps it through. Clark, active hands, steals it away. And there's that switch right there, active hands. She does an incredible job on a defensive end. Look for Stony Brook here to hold it up. Slow it down a little bit, slow the pace, and get a good shot. Important possession for the Seawolves. Inside three minutes to go. 15 on the shot clock for Gonzalez. Stony Brook up by seven. Led by as many as 21. Gonzalez downhill, five on the shot clock, looking for an outlet. It's Zeta Gonzalez, turns three, can't hit. Oh, that would have been a circus effort. McCormack flies the other way with two and a half to go. Great battle inside, Clark and Berger going at it. Power Cassidy goes to Berger. Look to dump it off to Allen. She thought she was going to shoot it, was looking to box out. Here comes Stony Brook. Gonzalez absorbs contact and finishes. I was about to say a one-on-four fast break, but that means nothing to Gigi Gonzalez. Finishes at a big bucket. Timeout, Holy Cross. Stony Brook back up by nine. It's 57-48, 2.01 remaining. And Gigi Gonzalez just so quick, flying down the floor. Only four points tonight. She's now two for 12, but she hits a shot in the biggest moment of the game. Yeah, none bigger than that one right there. Makes it a nine-point Stony Brook lead, and here you see it off the errant pass. Gonzalez, like three or four purple jerseys, no matter, takes it right to the basket and is able to finish with the left hand. The confidence is there regardless of how she's doing in the game currently. I think she only knows one way, and that, you know, that's <laughs> 125 miles an hour, coast to coast. If I, if I see a little bit of daylight, I'm going to take it. Well, that puts the Seawolves back up by nine. Gonzalez, another in the long line of great point guards here at Stony Brook. K.K. Hilaire, Shorty Johnson, and now Gigi Gonzalez. Holy Cross will inbound out of the timeout. And a foul called. That's going to be on Clark for trying to fight through the McCormick screen at Stony Brook's only their second team foul. Two minutes left to go. Holy Cross hasn't scored in almost three minutes. In the biggest stages of the game, the Seawolves led by 21 with a minute and a half left in the second quarter. Holy Cross has not led in this game, though they've outscored Stony Brook 
in each of the last two quarters, and they're outscoring them in this quarter as well. McCormack to inbound from out of the basket. Two minutes to go. High octane basketball. High intense. Berger at the top. Kicks to Flanagan. Inside for Allen. Spins. Left hand. Too short. Rebound. On the deck. Berger comes away with it. A minute 40 to go. Holy Cross is going to run out of time. They have to hurry on the offensive end. Down nine. Power Cassidy goes baseline. Gets through. Blocked by Corley. And that will stay here. Last touch by Kalise. And a huge rejection. Great job by Corley defensively. And uh, those are some of the intangibles that she brings to the Seawood lineup. No foul against a really good offensive player in Power Cassidy. A minute and a half remaining. Nice look for Power Cassidy. Can't hit. Rebound offensively. Berger was too far under the backboard. And the shot won't go. Stony Brook now has to slow it down. GG. Really good, yeah, really good decision by Gonzalez to slow that down. I know. I thought she thought about <laughs> taking it to the basket. I think she heard Ashley Langford screaming, pull it out, pull it out, and she did, and she'll head to the free throw line as Holy Cross is now over the limit. 116 remaining. Holy Cross has not scored in over 3 minutes and 40 seconds. The defense for Stony Brook coming up big when they needed it most. That's one of the last 10 from the floor for the Crusaders. Well, here's Gonzalez at the line. And she adds on to the lead. It's back up to 10. They've also had five turnovers mm. in this period, and that spells a lot of trouble for the Crusaders. If they cut this, they did a great job fighting back in the, into this game. And sometimes you just use so much, expend so much energy fighting back from that big deficit that you just run out of gas down a stretch. Gonzalez got both on that trip. Now up 11. Flip it to the other side. Power Cassidy, three. Book it. Eight-point ball game. On a big shot. And the fouls come. Gigi Gonzalez will go back to the line with 56 seconds to go. Holy Cross, six for 26 from beyond the arc. That's Power Cassidy's third triple of the game. They're going to need a few more if they ever come away with the miracle victory here. Down eight. 56 ticks left to go. Gonzalez with six points. Two have come from the line in the last minute. Looking to cement this victory. She hits another. Well, Stony Brook averaging 81 points per game over the first three. Now at 60 with a minute to go. Well, they were on a pace for 100 <laughs> after the first quarter, but Holy Cross has really buckled down on the defensive end, and that might be it right there as Gonzalez Hits both and make it a 10-point, four-possession game with less than a minute to go. 61-51. Gonzalez up to eight points. She's shot two for 12. She's got six points in this quarter, though, that have helped a lot. Well, she does so many other things. When, when she struggles on the offensive end, she creates for her teammates a sensational defender on the other end. And, uh, you know, she's, she's got all the pieces. We'll stay right here on... On flow as we look at Holy Cross's next game. They got a tough stretch here. This is the first of four straight road games. The next one is at Villanova. Another really, really good team in the Big East. Not easy. Going to go head back to Massachusetts and then head back down to Philly to take on the Villanova Wildcats. And their road trip goes past that as well. They go at Stonehill after Thanksgiving and then at Vermont before they return home. So this is a stretch that's really important. A tough schedule, and Maureen McGarity credited that to winning. When you win, you got to play the tougher teams because nobody else wants to play it, and well, that's both, what happens. Well, both of these teams play in a one big conference, Matt. You're not going to get two bids out of the Patriot or the CAA. Not likely. Uh, so you want to prepare your team in non-conference game. You want to battle, you want to battle test it because it's not going to be easy winning either one of these conferences. Power Cassidy open for three. Can't hit. Janelle Allen flies in for the rebound, puts it on a deck and finishes. Second chance effort there for Janelle Allen. Back to an eight-point ball game. And Kalise Corley gets fouled. She'll go to the line. Stunnerberg's been very good at the free throw line. 10 for 12 so far. 
And Corley with two big ones coming up here. Corley scoreless tonight, 0 for 2 from the floor. Now on the board, hits a big free throw to put the Seawolves back up by 9. That's not the points that Corley scores, it's all the other things that she does, the defense, the intensity, the, the ability to rebound the basketball on both ends. Yep, she's got six rebounds, four on the defensive end, two on the offensive end in this ballgame. Hits both back to a 10-point lead. Clock ticking, 40 seconds to go. McCormick looks for power Cassidy, drives the lane, floater, off the glass, got it to fall. Nice action there by Holy Cross off the flare screen. Corley looks to get it to King and a foul. No, a timeout called. Ashley Langford takes the timeout. Well, Stony Brook talking things over here with 32 and a half seconds to go. Up by eight. That might have been just to make sure they advanced the ball up the floor. Well, I don't know if they called the timeout prior to inbounding it, so that would be oh, a big difference. That's, if you, that's you have a to big take, difference. You, you, have to, you have to call the timeout um, prior to taking the ball inbound. So let's see when that timeout was called. They might just get it from the sideline of where they were or, or initially after they inbounded it. And maybe Ashley Langford did not yep. like what she saw handling it early on in that possession. So, yeah, it'll be on the sideline, and Holy Cross will be able to initiate that full-court pressure. Pressure in front of the bench. King got it into Pittman, and Pittman gets fouled. Sharice Pittman will go to the free throw line with a chance to make this a 10-point lead. Credit to Holy Cross for making this a ball game. Certainly didn't look like it was going to be after a 24-5 first quarter onslaught by the Seawolves. Holy Cross, you know, they are a battle-tested, experienced basketball team, well-coached, some great adjustments on the defensive end made by Maureen McG McGarity uh, for the Crusaders. But again, you know, this is the M.O. for Stony Brook. They usually have a little bit of a lull here and there during the game, but they're able to close out games because of their intensity, their athleticism, their preparation, their coaching, and their depth. Ten-point lead now for Stony Brook. McCormack drops it off, stolen away by Gonzalez. She's flying up the floor. Berger chasing her down. Gonzalez goes up, is fouled, and finishes. Count the bucket for Gigi Gonzalez. And that should put the ball on what will be Stony Brook's fourth straight win to start the year. And it didn't come easy, Matt. It looked like it was going to come easy. It didn't. And, uh, you know, this is what you want as a coach. You want to, uh, for Maureen McGarity, you want to see if your team can battle adversity. How tough are they? Can they come back? Can they execute down the stretch? And for Stony Brook, you want to be tested. You know, they came out. They know how good they can be on the offensive end, on the defensive end. And then Holy Cross battled back, and uh, they figured out a way to get it done. J.G. Gonzalez now into double figures. She's got 11. Power Cassidy puts up the long three. Can't hit. Berger the rebound. Won't go. Pittman pulls it down. And a loose ball goes into the hands of Gonzalez. And that will do it. Gigi crosses half court and will dribble it out. And Stony Brook improves to 4-0 on the season and gets a huge non-conference victory by 13 points here at home against a team that went to the NCAA tournament a year ago. And this certainly speaks to the depth, to the balance of, of Stony Brook. You did not get vintage performances out of Gigi Gonzalez and Sharice Pittman, but, you know, Zeta Gonzalez had 15, Clark had 17. They got great contributions off the bench from Brantley. So this is a deep Stony Brook team with a whole lot of character. Well, you talked about it. The contributions, the balance is just so impressive to watch this group mesh the way they have this early. They get stops when they need to. They get Usually they get good shots. They're a very effective fourth quarter team. Well coached, well prepared, and a uh, well deserved victory. We'll be joined by the head coach of the Seawolves, Ashley Langford, when we come back. Stony Brook wins this 68 55 to go to 4 0 on the year. Stay with us. <laughs> 